At 31 degrees Fahrenheit, you freeze. At 33 degrees Fahrenheit, you melt. You live exactly at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the knife edge between existence and extinction. Right now, the planet is warming by more than that. So yes, you are melting alive. You are Mesentia trias solifugus, the ice worm, a creature so strange that scientists once refused to believe you existed, a living thread that crawls through glaciers, breathing air trapped centuries ago. You are not a monster or a miracle. You are simply alive in a place designed for death. You begin before sunrise, before sound, inside a glacier's heart, dark, silent, older than the human species. The snow has been falling here for centuries, pressing down layer after layer until the flakes fuse into glass. Your egg rests between them, a bubble of potential frozen into time. You're born when that time cracks. Your enzymes melt a small halo around your body, and for a moment you float in water you made yourself. You move, slowly but undeniably alive. The temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It will never change. If it does, you won't be here to feel it. You have no eyes to see the blue glow above, no ears to hear the glaciers groan as it slides downhill. You sense only pressure and faint gradients of warmth. You follow them like instinct, as if the cold itself is whispering directions. Your body is thin as a thread of hair, black to absorb what little heat the world provides. Your skin is slick, waxy, glistening, a membrane that both protects and betrays you. It holds water in, but also transmits the smallest pulse of light. Your blood flows slowly, rich with proteins that stop it from freezing solid. They are your armor, your curse, your secret. You feed on ghosts. Every bite you take is something ancient. A fragment of pollen, a bacterium, a fleck of soot from an eruption centuries ago. Each one fell from the sky long before you were conceived. Now they're trapped here with you, preserved in eternal cold, until you arrive to eat them. You scrape the ice with your mouth parts, harvesting thin films of algae invisible to the human eye. Each meal is microscopic. Each day you must find thousands. If you stop moving, hunger finds you before freezing does. You eat the past to survive the present. That's what life in a glacier means. When the sun sets, your world stirs. The surface cools just enough for you to rise. Through narrow tunnels, you crawl upward, emerging on snow that glows silver under the moon. You are not alone. Tens of thousands writhe beside you, turning the glacier's skin into a living shadow. To the human eye, it looks like the snow is bleeding ink. In truth, it's you feeding, breathing, pulsing in the cold air. You taste the surface for hours. Microscopic algae bloom under starlight. Their sugars keep you alive. Their color stains your gut emerald under a microscope. Then the horizon brightens. The first sliver of dawn slices across the peaks. You feel it instantly. Not as light, but as pain. The temperature rises by half a degree. Your cells begin to rupture. The air itself becomes venom. You dive, burrowing through snow that melts beneath your body heat. The deeper you go, the slower you move. You can still feel the light chasing you through the ice, diffused, diluted, deadly. You reach the lair where blue turns black again and you rest. The glacier closes around you like a lung exhaling frost. Days pass. Seasons change above you, but not for you. You do not hibernate because you cannot stop. Your metabolism is tuned to perpetual motion. If you freeze, your body shatters. If you rest too long, the oxygen in your tiny pocket of meltwater runs out. So you crawl, always, endlessly, through corridors that reshape themselves faster than you can memorize them. Sometimes you find others. You brush against another body in the dark. And for a moment, you are not alone. You twine together, exchange cells, genes, messages older than language. You create eggs that you will never see. You bury them in colder ice than you can tolerate, and then you crawl away. Because staying means death. Your kind once covered continents. During the last ice age, the planet belonged to you. Glaciers sprawled for miles, and your species threaded through them like veins of life. When mammoths roamed above, you writhed below unseen but everywhere. Now those glaciers are ghosts. The mountains that held them bleed meltwater all summer long. Your empire is evaporating in real time. Every decade your territory shrinks by kilometers. 
Each melt season erases generations of eggs before they hatch. You try to follow the cold uphill, but the peaks end. There's no higher ground when the sky itself is warm. The predators come as the world changes. Snow buntings, ravens, even spiders learn that the moving black dots on ice mean food. They strike fast. You feel the pressure before you see the shadow. You twist, but you have nowhere to go. A beak pierces the crust, and your body breaks like a thread of smoke. For each survivor, dozens are lost. The glacier surface becomes a field of gray specks, your species written into snow as punctuation marks of extinction. Rain begins to fall in midwinter. That shouldn't happen here. But the air is too warm now. The rain seeps through cracks and carries heat with it. Your tunnels flood. The walls soften. Your world, once rigid and eternal, turns to soup. You crawl upward, trying to find cold. Above you, the surface is melting. Below you, water pools. There is no right direction anymore. You are trapped in between. A worm caught between two kinds of drowning. Each year, the melt season grows longer. Each year, you surface later and return sooner. You can feel evolution running out of time. Humans arrive with cameras and gloves. They kneel, amazed, as the snow writhes at their feet. They scoop you up in clear tubes, holding you against the light like jewelry. They smile, call you incredible, call you proof of life's adaptability. They refrigerate you, photograph you, sequence your genes, isolate your antifreeze proteins to study how you cheat death. They write papers, build slideshows, make documentaries. They call you a wonder. But every lab light, every plane ride, every machine that keeps them alive melts another piece of the glacier that keeps you alive. You are famous only because you are dying. You are valuable only because you are rare. Below, the glacier fractures. The deep ice groans louder now like thunder trapped underground. Entire caverns collapse. You can feel it through the ground. The death rattle of a frozen world. You crawl faster, searching for another pocket of stillness. You find water instead. Warm, flowing, unstoppable. You're swept along with it. For a brief moment, you're weightless. A black thread spinning through meltwater. Then the tunnel opens to daylight. And heat hits you like a wall. Your skin softens. Your body begins to unravel. You twist, blind and desperate, but there's nothing to crawl into anymore. The glacier that birthed you has turned into a river, and the river doesn't care. You break apart molecule by molecule, until the water carries you downhill, through soil, through roots, until the ocean swallows what's left. If anyone remembers you, it will be scientists staring at old photos, tiny dark lines against white snow. Labels reading Mesentia trias solifugus, collection date, elevation, location, extinct. No bones, no shells, just data. You will leave behind nothing that can fossilize. No one will ever find proof that you were here except the rising sea that took your name. So, why does it suck to be born as an ice worm? Because you were born already on the edge of death. Because the only world you can survive in is the one the rest of life is destroying. Because even perfection can't outrun a changing climate. Your evolution's experiment. A creature balanced on the smallest number that matters. You live in the margin between freeze and melt. And that margin is gone. Your extinction won't roar. It will whisper. Drip by drip. Until the last glacier sighs into water. And when that happens... The planet will have lost not just you, but everything cold enough to remember you. You are the pulse inside the ice, the breath of a dying glacier. When you stop moving, the mountains stop breathing too. The world will warm, and people will celebrate it. They'll call it progress. They'll say the cold was harsh, and the warmth is good. They won't notice the silence where the worms once fed. You are proof that life can exist anywhere and proof that it can vanish from everywhere one degree at a time. Thank you for watching. If this gave you chills, hit subscribe, leave a like, and stay tuned for more stories about the creatures that live where life isn't supposed to.